the owners of Treach Farms, and this is our first year doing farmers markets, and we had a lot of people asking questions about our beef. And it seemed that the number one question they always asked was, is your beef grass fed? Well, the answer is not a simple yes or no. So today what I want to do is talk to you about what grass fed means, uh, the advantages, the disadvantages of grass fed cattle. Um, the cattle we're going to be talking about will be heifers and steers harvested for their meat between the ages of 12 and 36 months of age. 100% grass fed beef only eat grass and their mother's milk. Nothing else from the time they're born till the time they're harvested. Sounds great, doesn't it? Cows out roaming a large, less green pasture field, blue skies. Well, what about the winter time or droughts when there are no less green pastures? They are allowed to eat dried grass and hay. Now, dried grass does not offer much nutritional value, but farmers are allowed to dry out alfalfa and clover and other high protein items to help them along. So, these cows don't even have to be on a lush pasture field but can be fed in a feedlot. Oh wait, I see a problem with that. Do you? If these cows are allowed to be in a feedlot and only fed dried grass, does that mean a 100% grass-fed cow can be raised only on a feedlot? Yes. Year-round hay on feedlots passes for 100% grass-fed beef. Now, I almost forgot, if a rancher feels that animal's health may be at risk due to weather conditions, poor quality hay, or whatever, they are allowed to supplement grain in the diet to help the cattle thrive. Now, I'm not even gonna talk about those implications today. So, wow, who out there thought they could be eating 100% grass-fed cattle raised in a feedlot? Not a lot of you out there. So, let's start working on this. Uh, start with some definitions. Grass, grass is a, um, a vegetation that's grown with long narrow leaves it's grown wild or cultivated grain grain is a, a um, seed dried harvested off of uh, cereal grasses so corn seed is actually a fruit a vegetable and a grain it's a vegetable because it's harvested for eating it's a uh, grain because it's a dry seed of a cereal grass Whoa, wait a minute. I said dry seed of a cereal grass. Yes, corn is a grass. So right about now, you probably want to pause this video, go to Google and ask it, is corn a grass? Okay, so hopefully you've Googled, is corn a grass by now? And you found out that it is, and uh, probably a little confused. So let me start explaining how all this works. I'm standing here in front of this corn field, or grass field, if you will. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this ear of corn and usually later in the year, this is a little more dried out, we come out here, we take corn, we pick it, and we remove all the seeds off of the cotton. And all those seeds end up being grain. And that's what grain is, is seeds removed from a, from a grass. So if I come back over and I take the whole stalk and we do this when it is green like this and we chop all this up with the machine and then we chop the stalk up with the machine. Now it'll go into a lot little pieces when we do this but all this gets smashed together, put in bags, silos. Um, bunkers, stuff like that, and about three weeks later you'll have what's called corn silage, and that is fed to, you guess it, grass-fed cattle. Um, have you been lied to? Not really. Um, it's just that most people believe what they're fed. So, now you know that your uh, grass-fed beef can be confined, and it can be fed corn. So, you're probably a little confused right about now and if you're a person that tries to buy 100% grass-fed beef to eat all the time you're probably a little mad well don't be because your next question should be just because they can be confined and fed corn are all grass-fed beef confined and fed corn absolutely not
There's only one study done so far I know of that actually compares grass-fed to grain-fed, and it was done by Texas A&M and done on Texas grass. Yes, the type of grass can change the nutritional value of what you get out of your meat. All of my grass-loving friends say they get five to six times more omega-3s from their grass-fed. Well, that .055 and .020 are not that different in a serving of ground beef. Both are less than 10% of your recommended daily intake. If you're truly trying to get your omega-3s, you can eat a handful of walnuts and stir in some flaxseed oil. Then we have the oleic acid, another item grass-fed advocates like to tout. As you can see, grain-fed has more of this cancer-fighting, anti-inflammatory item. The saturated and trans fat, everyone knows is bad for you. And look at that, grain-fed has less. This is probably a surprise to most. So cattle are no different than humans. Some humans can eat pie and ice cream all day long and not gain a pound. Others can just smell the pie in the oven and gain two pounds. The only difference is two pounds in cattle is a good thing. So there's test stations all over the country where you can send your animal to be tested to see how they, they compare with other animals in the same conditions. We use the uh, Purdue bull test for our bulls. Um, this little guy here is one that will be going into the bull test. And he's got his twin brother or his brother out here that'll go also. And what they do is they, they feed him the exact same thing. They, they're in the same conditions and they do this for multiple months. They uh, ultrasound them for marbling, ribeye area. Uh, they see how well they use their feed and all those kinds of things. So we're, we're trying to make our cattle better through genetics. And what they're finding is there's, ca there's uh, bulls at this station that will gain 1.5 pounds a day. Some will gain 6.5 pounds a day. So it really does all depend on their genetics and, and um, who their family heritage is. Now, we know cattle all grow at different rates due to their genetics. And I'm not going to badmouth any farmers or, or ranchers out there that raise cattle. Um, if there wasn't a demand or a need for feedlots and grass-fed cattle, those things wouldn't exist. The feedlots, they're lucky if they profit $10 a, a beef sometimes. And um, so what they've done is they've become very efficient at what they do. And what they do is they feed the masses. So the world consumes about 130 billion pounds of beef a year. Americans eat about 25 billion pounds of that. We, um, in order to do that, we have to uh, harvest about 30 million ca cattle a year. And in order to harvest 30 million cattle, we have to have um, in our herd inventory about 100 million cows a year. Now, a little comparison for you would be the deer population in America. Because everybody keeps telling me, oh, your cows need to be out roaming a pasture, you know, lush green pastures, just eating wild. Well, there's 30 million deer in our herd inventory here in America. So the insurance companies are already going crazy about 30 million deer. Could you imagine 100 million of these big old beauties out there roaming around on the roads? The insurance companies couldn't afford to, to insure you anymore. So we know we can't raise that many cattle on pastures alone. It takes a lot more acreage. It takes a lot more time to get grass-fed beef ready for harvest. Uh, feedlots can have beef ready in 12 to 16 months of age. Um, Grass-fed usually takes 30 to 36 months before they're ready to be harvested. Now that's a true grass-fed animal that has only been out on pastures eating grass. Now USDA has a, uh, a requirement for any animal harvested over the age of 30 months. They have to be handled separately, segregated from the other animals, and their specified risk materials must not enter the food chain. Now, to me, that don't sound like something I want to be messing with or eating. So, we at Treach Farms want to produce some of the safest, healthiest food and best tasting for you to eat. And I've had some of my customers even ask me, they say, what do you do with them cows? Do you massage them and feed them ice cream every day? Well, kind of, yes. Are you still with me? I know the video was long and chopped up, but I could have talked for hours. Figured it best to shorten it up to some key points. Now, what I'd like for you to do with the information I gave you is research for some more. There's always a lot of information out there. 
and then start talking to your local farmers, ranchers, and your grass-fed guys, and um, ask them what they feed their cows exactly, and and how old the cows are when they harvest them for beef. That'll let you know exactly what you are getting when you when you get your beef. Then what you need to do is decide: Do you want to eat with the masses or? Do you want to eat like a king with Treach Premium Angus?